If there's one thing I think women expect to get right if they visit hospital is when doctors make a diagnosis of miscarriage. If we go back to 2011, um, some studies were carried out, two from our group, that showed that the guidance at that time was probably unsafe and could be associated with making a mistake. And as a result of that, national bodies such as the Royal College in the UK changed guidelines very, very quickly. Um, but some people felt perhaps that the changes were too conservative. And whilst the guideline changes um, were related to single scans, those guidelines didn't tell us anything about what we should do if we repeat scans or what we should see on repeat scans when on the first scan the, the situation is uncertain. And that's why we carried out the study which we're publishing today. The diagnosis of miscarriage is based on an ultrasound scan that shows that uh, a gestation sac is above a certain size and no embryo can be seen, or an embryo above a certain size where no heartbeat can be seen. What we've done is look at a larger number of patients than was looked at in 2011, it's over 2,800 women, and we've looked at the guidelines as they are now uh, to see how safe they are. In other words, what is the possibility of a false positive diagnosis of miscarriage? Can we get it wrong? One of the things that the previous guideline changes did not address was what happens if you repeat the scan. Because if you scan a pregnancy and it's below the size threshold, where we may or may not make a decision of miscarriage, we, it's an uncertain finding. So we have to do something to follow it up. And what we do is repeat the scan at an interval. And we have to think perhaps the, the sac would be bigger, or perhaps we'd see something such as an embryo or a yolk sac appearing in, on the scan. The problem with those guidelines is it didn't tell us any of that. It didn't tell us when we should repeat the scan and it didn't tell us what we should see. So there's a gap and that's what our paper addresses. If we look at the cutoffs, the good news is that our paper shows that the guideline changes were correct, that they're associated with a very low chance of, a, of, a, of an error, of a, of a false positive diagnosis of miscarriage and we can say that with a high level of certainty. In terms of repeat scans, however, the story is slightly different because what we've shown is that perhaps what's happening is that people are bringing people back a little bit too early. Most guidelines at the moment say if you're uncertain, come back in seven days, repeat the scan. And at that time, you should expect to see a heartbeat or perhaps if you have an empty sac, you should expect to see an embryo. What our data shows is that if you do that, you are possibly going to have a false positive diagnosis in a small number of cases. And we are talking about a small number of cases. But remember, you know, there should be no errors over something as important as this. So what we're suggesting is that in most cases, we simply wait a little bit longer, perhaps 14 days. And if we do that, according to our data, the chances of a false positive is, uh, is, is just not, is, is not there. It's zero percent. So it's not a huge change, but it's a very important change. The other thing which is important is gestational age. I think it'll be clear to most people, if you see an MBO or a SAC at seven weeks, you might expect something different to if it's at 10 weeks. And so your interpretation of the scan has to differ. Fortunately, a lot of women come for a scan between 11 to 14 weeks, find they have a small embryo or a small gestation sac, and it's very distressing to have to wait before a diagnosis can be made. And we've shown that actually we can address that issue, that issue. And if you have a sac under a certain size at 10 weeks or an embryo under a certain size at 10 weeks, in our database, it was 100% specific for a diagnosis of miscarriage, which is an important step forward uh, because quite a few women do fall into that category. So I think looking at the study overall, what we've done is confirm that current guidance on the basis of a single scan is sound and it's safe with a very low possibility that any error will be made. But it does show that when you repeat scans, we should just take a little bit more time before we make a decision. Similarly, we can take into account gestational age and look at that before we make decisions as well. So I think women should be reassured by what the guidelines are, but perhaps they just have to have slightly lower expectations sometimes that they won't always get the answer they want straight away and perhaps they have to wait a little bit sometimes before they know exactly what's going on.